Today I'm going to open up my 40 pound furnace. The last time I used it, it developed a crack in the crucible. So it's time to change the pot. I've charged it 141 times, so I think the crucible is uh, definitely overdue for being replaced. I mostly use this furnace in the summertime, and I turn it on and off several times throughout the year, so it's actually taken me six years to do 141 charges. So we'll look at the numbers after. So I'm going to take off the yoke and open up the gathering port. And I'm going to slip a piece of cardboard underneath here because the bricks here aren't cemented in, in case I need to wiggle one of them out and replace it hot. But I want to make sure that there's a little bit of support here so that when I open it up the bricks don't fall out. Alright. Yeah, there's the crack in my crucible on the left hand side there at about 10 o'clock. So I'm going to very carefully lift these fiberboard pieces out of here, kind of in slow motion. I uh, don't have any exposed fibers in my studio. I wouldn't really consider these to be exposed fibers because they're protected by the top lid. But nonetheless, I, uh, I certainly don't like working with them. Alright, now I'm going to uh, lift the pot out of here. I'm going to rock it back and forth first because of my crack here. I probably have some seepage. Ah, uh, there we go. So there's the crucible crack and here's the seepage. There was a bit of seepage. I probably could have stopped it a day or so earlier and it just lifts right up out of the furnace because I sat the crucible onto about an inch of grog or pre-fired clay bits and that's why I do that so if there's any seepage the seepage soaks into the the grog or the clay and it doesn't start to erode the soft kiln bricks underneath it. There's the uh, the powdered grog in the bottom and you can see there's a little bit of erosion down there, not very much. I think I'll just pick that out with a screwdriver and put in the new pot and continue using it. The elements look to be in pretty good shape. I have the feeling I'll get another uh, 20 or 30 cycles out of them, no problem. So great, I'll just replace the pot and close it back up. done. There's a bit more erosion here that I'll mention and that's in the gathering area here and I'm right-handed so most of these thin stringers that come off the pot are on the right-hand side of center and most of them are very thin like you know as thin as a hair but you can see here there's been a couple of thicker ones that actually have enough fluxing material in them to start eroding into the soft brick. So that's not bad. I calculated um, in my notes based on the records that I keep from using this furnace how many 
gathers I took, and, and I, I forget without looking, I think it was 22 or 23,000 gathers I've taken from this furnace since I built it. And I'm still on the original bricks. So that's not bad for all that, uh, all that use. And now let's look at the numbers. This is a list here of every time that I used this furnace since I built it and what color I melted. And uh, I'll just run through this quickly because it's actually kind of interesting. Um, I keep track of my energized hours using uh, uh, hour meter and I know it's 5,000 watts. So with this reading on my hour meter I used 6,015 kilowatt hours and we paid 12 cents a kilowatt hour so it wound up being uh, 721 dollars in electricity to run this thing and uh, I melted uh, 5640 pounds in 141 charges but the furnace was actually hot for 208 days because I, I idled it now and then to take a day off and when I run it up that takes two extra days for, uh, for heating it up so my per pound melting cost was, um, it's down in here somewhere, yeah, it's 12.8 cents a pound melting cost, including my days off and my, um, my running up the furnace. I ran it up 27 times, so that's a lot of heating up over the years. But my actual melted per pound cost of producing glass from this furnace while it was hot was uh, 8.67 cents per melted pound. And I calculated I made 9,200 items and took 23,000 gathers. Um, a lot of the things that I make are small, but they're at least two gathers. And I made, uh, I figured, around 600 vases, which are four gathers plus punty and that sort of thing. Um, and I, I did a rough calculation that the, the value of what I made in 141 charges was $131,000. So the, the average daily production was about $928. You know, it was of course higher if I was doing vases and a little bit lower if I, uh, you know, if I was um, doing uh, instruction or uh, making uh, small gift items. So that's about it. I did another calculation here where I added in the cost of a crucible and a set of elements and it brought my melting cost up to 19 and a half cents a pound. So that's including the total energy cost and the cost of a pot and a set of elements. Um, you know, it's only fair to factor that in as well. I mean, my, my energy cost per melted pound was eight and a half cents, but it was actually another 11 cents a pound for the uh, for the overhead. All right, that pretty much covers it. So it's a great little super energy efficient furnace that basically melts glass for under 10 cents a pound. Oh, I, I forgot to mention one thing. My average daily cost, my energy cost, is $3.47 a day. So that includes every day that this furnace was in use, including the days I was running it up and the days it was idling, not just the days that I was charging it. So that's pretty good. That's a 24-hour day. $3.47 to keep it running 24 hours a day.